G'day YouTube, I am back and I have a video that's been a long time coming. Today I'm going to be talking about in astrophotography, how we use colour, how we capture colour, how we recombine colour, how we use narrowband, LRGB, different colour treatments. I'm going to do a broad overview of how this all works. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. with we should probably acknowledge that there's a difference between mixing color in astrophotography and mixing color say in paint. Uh, the astrophotography method is a additive method that means when we add colors together they slowly march towards white. We add red green and blue together they're white. Just like on the pixels on your screen if you zoom in if the R, G and B pixel are all lit up you end up with white. Let's do a quick example. If I select one channel and then turn them all on so we can see them and grab white. So you can see the red we've just drawn a white splotch of paint. If I turn all the layers on you can see there's red there and if we do the same in green down here you can see green and red are mixing to make yellow which is counterintuitive. And we do the same for blue and like a Venn diagram in the middle where they all combine you get white. Pretty simple. Of course if you do this with paint a completely different story. Okay Zach, can you mix? What colour does it make? I don't know, it's turning the dark purple. I don't know why. Because paint actually contains things that suck all the other colours out. So red paint is actually sucking the green and the blue out of the light. It's not emitting red. So if we add all these paints together, you're adding a whole lot of molecules together that are actually absorbing all the light. So you end up with black. One big topic in astrophotography is true colour versus false colour. Now if you're shooting with a colour camera or if you're shooting with RGB filters and then combining them later, you are ending up with a true colour image. That is an image which is a true representation of how a nebula or a galaxy would look if we were looking at it with our own eyes and if our puny pathetic human eyeballs were sensitive enough to actually see such a faint object. <laughs> Of course the easiest way to capture colour in astrophotography is to simply use a colour camera. If you're using a DSLR camera or a colour CMOS or a colour CCD, these all capture the colours as they're coming from space. Uh, of course this is problematic and I go through this in my video about why astronomers use black and white cameras. You get less quantum efficiency per channel there are basically gaps between the colours and typically the chips on colour cameras are biased and they're usually biased to green because they've got an extra green pixel in the RGB matrix. So the colour you get out of a colour camera is not going to be perfect colour straight out. It's going to be biased usually towards green plus the atmospheric effects, maybe moon glow or light pollution, whatever else you're fighting against. So the easiest way to correct for that colour I find is I use a few simple methods in PixInsight which is the colour calibration tool and background neutralization and SCNR and applying these three tools gives me a really equal even colour across the image where the background of space is black and the foreground colour in the target is the colour it should be. But to get more detail you want to be using a mono camera and that's where RGB filters come in. And now I do this with planetary so when I take images of the planets I'll take an image in red and then green and then blue and then I'll combine them later on in Photoshop to merge all of those channels together and give the natural but uncalibrated color of the target I'm looking at. Okay, here's a super quick example of RGB. We have our green channel here, we have our blue channel here, and we have our red channel here. Blue is looking really horrible, red, you can see the red spot just looks white. Again, with additive color, we end up with red because red has the most value here. I'm gonna convert this to an RGB color image and you'll see in the channels here that uh, we now have all of these channels. They're all exactly the same though. So what I'm going to do is head over to blue. I'm going to select all and copy that layer. I'm going to go to my channels here, the 
go to blue and paste it in. Gonna go to green, do the same thing, copy that, back to our red image and go to the green channel here, paste it in here. Now if we look at the result, we have a color image. So it's taken with the mono camera, three different filters, RGB combined here. Of course this isn't calibrated color. I do find that for planets at least, going to auto color actually does a pretty good job. Using RGB filters this way with a mono camera is always gonna give you a more detailed image. It does take a bit longer though because you do have to do three separate runs of images to get the final one. The next little thing I wanna talk about is a broadband image. A color image is a broadband image, but you can also take a mono broadband image and use that as your luminance layer. So to take a broadband image, it's essentially using a mono camera with no filters. You're still getting all the colors coming in, but of course they just get converted to a value of light and dark. So you end up with a black and white image new subscriber. So you end up with a black and white image which has a lot of detail. And then you can use that for your luminance layer. LRGB. What the hell is LRGB? Luminance, red, green and blue. Essentially means that you're combining four channels, your RGB for your colour and luminance. But what is that? And this is a bit confusing because even though someone says they're doing an LRGB image, it can mean a lot of different things. For me, I'll be using either a broadband mono image or a hydrogen alpha narrowband image as my luminance layer. And then for my RGBs, because I don't use filters, I just combine that with a color image. That's a really good shortcut. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm only doing two runs. One run for the luminance layer and one run for the one shot color and then merging them together. So only have to do two runs to get a full color image, but with the detail that you get from a mono or a narrowband image. This is something I do by blending the color layer uh, with the color blending mode on top of the detail layer underneath. And I often refer to it as the detail layer instead of luminance, because luminance sometimes suggests like brightness. And it is referring to the dark and bright levels in the image, but it's actually where your detail comes from. So there is our color layer stretched out a little bit and beneath that is the broadband layer with lots more detail and clarity. Now if we change the blending mode to color, it's merged these two together. So we've got all the detail and the color combined as one LRGB image. Now another way we can do this is if we start off with the color image here and we convert that image to lab color and then we go to channels here, you'll see that the channels are no longer RGB you've got this lab lightness A and B. And this lightness layer is something that we can replace with that mono layer. So if I go back to the LRGB stack here and go and just grab this broadband mono layer, copy and go back to the channels of our one shot color image. This is in lab color, so we've got it on the lightness channel. Paste that in and now look at the result and we have another way to combine obviously you'd go on from here and stretch your colors and your layers and curves and whatever whatever else you want to do here that's just another method to do an lrgb combination in photoshop so lrgb is usually a broadband layer with the rgb but a lot of people use a narrowband layer for their luminance, and I really like HARGB. And I prefer to use that designation instead of just saying LRGB on my images, I'll actually say HARGB, where I'm using the HA layer as the detail layer or the luminance layer, and then layering the one shot color on top of that. So I'll give you some examples of that here. Now, if you're into galaxies, I'm probably not, and I feel like the Northern Hemisphere gets a few better galaxies than we do. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Sorry, Southern Hemisphere, but there are some really cool galaxies you can shoot from the Northern Hemisphere. But if you are into galaxies, a really common way to shoot them is HAGB. So that's when you're taking your color as RGB, and then you're substituting the red layer for the HA layer, the hydrogen alpha layer. And this has the effect of turning what's otherwise a quite blue looking galaxy into blue red. 
where the hydrogen pops out as red blotches or red jewels all across the galaxy. And that's a really fantastic method. Of course, you can mix that up by doing an LRGB stack first, where you're mixing your luminance layer as a broadband mono with your RGB, and then bringing on the HA to replace the red layer. The opposite of broadband is, of course, narrowband. So instead of taking a full spectrum image, you're using a mono camera and a filter like hydrogen alpha or sulfur or oxygen to get a tiny little fraction of that spectrum. Now this allows us to do some pretty cool color combinations, but you end up with a false color image, not a true color image of space. However, often, especially when I'm looking at narrowband images, I find that you get so much more differentiation between these different elements that the image can look more detailed than a true color image. A true color image tends to always have this very ubiquitous look and feel of space, which is the reds, you know, a lot of red. You've seen those false color images from the Hubble that look quite green. The Pillars of Creation is obviously the most famous example of this. Uh, that's where we're mapping hydrogen to the green channel. The Hubble Space Telescope palette and all the other palettes, there are other common ones, like CFHT, CHFT, CF, CHFT, C, and a number of others. But what I've done to make this easier for you to visualize is I developed a tool a while back where you can upload your three channels, your hydrogen, alpha, sulfur, and oxygen, and it will show you every possible permutation of how they were mixed together. I do encourage you to check out that tool and I'll leave the link on there, it's hosted on the Bintel website. But of course Hubble is the most popular. Now you'll notice with the Hubble images, if you do the straight combination, you'll end up with purple looking stars, which is kind of unnatural and weird looking. A cool trick you can do in PixInside to get rid of the purple stars is to simply invert the image and then run SCNR on it. SCNR basically removes green bias. So it'll take those stars which are now green because you've inverted it and pull them back. So the image looks a lot more natural even though it's a completely false color image and at this point it's just art, right? I think that's a pretty broad overview so hopefully that gives you a bit more of a grounding in how we treat color in astrophotography. It's certainly not an exhaustive list of all the things you can do with color and combining channels with pixel math and percentages and it gets pretty deep but for the newcomer astrophotographer who's just a bit confused by all these terms I hope that sorted out a bit of it for you. Thanks also to everyone who tags me in their images. I really enjoy seeing my name pop up in images that I've helped you with or my videos have helped you with. Thanks to everyone at Neef who came and said hi. Check out Celestron's video of Neef if you haven't. Uh, I got to host that video and it has cool transitions and editing and basically all the stuff I don't have here. That's about it. So remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.